Hey, this is Matt from Invest Squad. Today is Tuesday, September 22nd, 2020. And before I hop into the analysis this afternoon, I wanted to share with you real quick that on Thursday after the close at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time, we're going to be hosting a webinar at Investiquant and we'll be going over uh, the platform that I use in these videos on a daily basis. So if you're interested in learning more about how you can do this type of analysis on your own and how you can get access uh, to the platform that I show you here daily, uh, you may want to sign up for this webinar. It is available at investaquant.com slash webinar. There's also a link in the description below this video that you can go to to sign up for it. All right, let's dig into today's scenario that is unfolding. So uh, yesterday we saw the markets close down a week, and today we have gapped up and we've got a fairly quiet session taking place. We've got about 33 points of range. It's been pretty two-way action that's been taking place. Uh, you can see in the top left chart, we've got the S&P. It gapped up this morning, pushed down, filled the gap, and we've kind of just been consolidating uh, most of the afternoon. NASDAQ's a little bit stronger down here, but this is a similar action that we've seen in a lot of uh, the, the trading throughout the day is just this sideways-like action. So what I want to do this afternoon is take a look at what has happened historically following this 20-day low close when you're getting a little bit quieter action taking place the next session. Uh, so let's set this up and discover. I'm going to use all four instruments. The setup is going to be an intraday time-based entry, and we will use 3 p.m. Eastern Time as the entry. It'll exit at the close, which is 4.15 p.m. Eastern Time. For the opening filter, I'm simply going to use gapping up, which means it's opening above the prior day closing price. Next, I'm going to go into post-open filters, and this is where I'm going to be able to describe the quiet activity uh, that we're seeing today. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use this intraday range size as a percentage of the five-day ATR. So currently, the five-day ATR for the S&P is about 64 points, and we have about 33 points of intraday range at the time of this recording. So I'm just going to put that there is a maximum range size of 75% to keep as many samples as possible while still saying it's a little bit quiet as a percentage of the five-day ATR. So uh, the intraday range is 75% or less of the five-day ATR. Next, I'm going to go on the price patterns, and I'm going to say that yesterday closed at a 20-day low close. That was true yesterday. And then lastly, I'm going to go into the indi indicators and add that we're above a 200-day moving average. So we're getting that 20-day low close, but still in a generally bullish environment being above that 200-day moving average. And then I'll click View Results. All right, and here we go. So these are the results of going long at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, exiting at the close, 4.15 p.m. Eastern Time, when you gap up following a 20-day low close that was above the 200-day moving average, and you're seeing a fairly quiet session taking place since then. So historically, we've got 58 samples in the S&P, 65 in the NASDAQ, 53 in the Dow, and 57 in the Russell. And looking at the win rates on these, you can see Three out of the four are fairly weak. The S&P, just 36% winners on the 58 samples that it has. The NASDAQ, 42% winners. The Dow, 42% winners. And the Russell, a little bit more neutral at 53% winners. So historically, the win rates on these as a group have been fairly weak. Uh, for going long at 3 p.m. Eastern and holding until the close. So the majority of these are closing below that 3 p.m. price. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the results distribution. I do have S&P loaded here, so I'll click on that. And here we can see the results distribution uh, where you've got the average trade for these results looks like it's coming in here as a loser, uh, a little bit under 100 bucks, and the standard deviation area is highlighted in blue here. So uh, minus one standard deviation here is somewhere around minus 400 bucks, plus one standard deviation from the average trade is plus 200 bucks. So you can definitely see there is a skewing on the downside, and you can see there are um, taller bars on the far end uh, compared to the far end on the positive side. So the far end down here, around this three, four hundred uh, dollars losses here, and the ES have been uh, more common than those same size winning trades on the positive side. Uh, so historically, this has skewed to the downside uh, as we approach the close. So hopefully you found that helpful. Good luck the rest of the day, and we'll see you next time.